So welcome everybody. Um, my name is Laura Gordon and I just want to introduce Alex who's going to be speaking to us today. Um, Alex has been developing for Joomla since 2008 uh, with the company he founded Source Coast. Originally a client focused business creating custom add-ons, the company pivoted towards social networking products as that market was rapidly maturing. In 2009, Source Coast released the first version of JFB Connect with um, basic authentication for Facebook. And by the way, I think he presented that in Joomla Day NYC. Um, anyway, yeah. okay. In the decade plus of development, JFB Connect has grown to support over a dozen social networks with deep integration for everything from authentication, social posting, social widgets, to meta tag management. More recently, he founded Joomla Gears an extension site focusing on products to improve customer experience on Joomla powered sites through the deep analytics and improved shopping cart checkout flow. So I will now give the floor um, to Alex. And again, please post your questions in the Q&A and we'll, I'll either interrupt in the middle or we'll wait till the end. And this session goes until 2.45. So the floor is yours, Alex, thank you. Fantastic, hi there. Uh, to me, my video looks pretty choppy but hopefully the audio comes through. You don't need to see my face very much during this video, so that's okay if I'm choppy. Um, I, this presentation is on social networking, um, and basically, oh, let me go to the top over there. So social network integration uh, with Joomla, and the main thing that I want to discuss here, yes, we make a social networking integration product. This is not a sales pitch. I'm not even gonna show you a picture, I don't think, of our extension. Um, really the whole goal here is to discuss social networking and how you can integrate it into your site or how you can use your site to bring users to your social network in general. Um, my dog just came in, hopefully he does not bark. Uh, there's, there's a lot to cover here and the whole breadth of social networking is so large. It's impossible to cover it all. It's impossible to go super deep on any one topic and so depending on your level of experience, hopefully you get something out of this. Um, but it is meant to cover a lot of different ideas and hopefully you'll find some things that you didn't know were possible with social networking integration that you can do that will hopefully surprise you and come up with some ideas on how to, to integrate with your site. So again, I'm Alex Andre. Um, I founded Source Coast uh, a dozen years ago, which we quickly realized that the social networking market um, was gonna be big. Um, it was already starting to get big at that point. So we started making this product, JFB Connect, and it's just blossomed over the 12 years to add more features and just do deeper and deeper integration and try and make sense of it all. Because as you're gonna see from a lot of what I'm gonna talk about, it can be very complex to implement some of the most simple things. And it's always surprising to hear that. Uh, more recently, I partnered with a, a man named Adam Melcher, who uh, has done design work for a lot of sites. And we started Joomla Gears. That site's really in the state of launching right now. Um, but we have a stats product on there, which we develop for a lot of our clients, which has it's just a dashboard of you know your number of articles, your number of users, how many users have you had in the last few months, how many how many posts have you got, what is trending. It's just a really easy way to see what your site does, and that product's a free product. And then we have add-ons for other extensions. So if you want deeper analytics into your J2 store or something like that, we'll be producing more um, stats over time. And then also this past week, actually after two years, we just uh, company that I'm running called Duck Duck Cat launched a hide and seek toy, which is now available on Amazon. So I generally keep myself way too busy and spread myself way too thin, but I love giving this talk just because there's always so much to learn. And the, 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 one of the main reasons I mentioned these three sites is because it's really important to develop a product, but also use your product. So on Duck Duck Cat, we're using a lot of the social integration features and I, I have to go through the whole Twitter routine of constant posting and everything like that. And so it's it's important that, you know, you sort of eat your own dog food and really understand, you know, what the market is and how to how to take advantage of whatever you can to grow your audience. So one thing to really start off with is I am a shoemaker. And if you've ever heard that phrase, it basically means don't look at my shoes. I 
don't post nearly enough to social networks uh, with DuckDuckCat. Now I am being forced to really get out there and you know promote uh, a new product, which has really been a new experience for me. Um, but Source Coast, if you look at our feeds, some of them have not been updated in years. And so I am not always the best example of what to do, but I can definitely give you pointers on what you should be doing. Um, but that sort of leads into the next slide here of invest in the right networks for you. Um, this slide right here, these pictures, this is social networks that were popular in 2010. And as you'll notice really quickly, half of these networks don't exist anymore. And the really important critical point to understand here is that you know if you're going to invest your time in trying to build up an audience, build up a following, create rich content and do everything that you should be doing to promote your site, pick the right networks. Now, obviously Facebook, Twitter, they're gonna be around in 10 years, but those aren't always the best networks for you. You should still focus on them because that's where everyone and where majority of people are. But if you're a music site, find a music social network that you think has longevity and is gonna stay around. Don't focus on stumbled upon or delicious or some of these other sites that don't exist anymore. You don't want to put all of your time and effort into trying to build a core audience and then have to start over again in two years. So a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about here are very generic and they're, they're much more tailored towards Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, but most social networks have a lot of the features that we're going to talk about or support a lot of the features. So really pick your core, social networks that you want to focus on building and then try and focus on those only. You don't want to have 50 share buttons on your site for every single social network out there because basically what happens then is no one uses any of them. So it's really good to try and focus on three, four, five social networks at most for most of your features and that will definitely keep you busy. But until you're gigantic, you don't need until you're gigantic, you don't need to focus on every single social network. You'll just spread yourself too thin. Um, so find find the networks that tailor to your audience, as well as the big ones that everyone knows that you need to support. All right. So we'll start here with the must-haves. And really, the features that I'm going to talk about here are the the features that usually are the easiest to implement, but also have the biggest impact on how your site can grow. It, these are the features that will have a double effect of helping to bring users to your site and helping promote your site to new users. And so these are the ones that you generally need to have on your site at all times. So open graph tags. Let me see if I can move myself somewhere better. <laughs> That's fine. We'll go top left again. So open graph tags, this was introduced by Facebook back in 2012 or 13. And basically these are meta descriptions that go on your page. And this is what generates the rich content. So when someone shares a, 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 an article from your site, this is what, the, what shows up in the news feeds. You'll have the title, you'll have a description, you'll have an image. And this lets you completely control site shows up on Facebook when it's shared. Um, there are times when Facebook might not take your title or description, but that's usually because it, the title might be too short or the image might not be large enough for the audience. And in those cases, it will pick something else. But for Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, they all use open graph tags. Twitter also has its own set of tags called Twitter cards. Um, but if you don't use Twitter cards, then open graph tags are used. Uh, but you can see over here, this is just the raw HTML on the left side of the screen. This is my left side of the screen, um, <clears throat> where basically you have these HTML tags that will say like OG colon title Joomla social extensions. This is from our website, Source Coast. Lower than that, you'll see OG colon image, and that's the link to basically our Source Coast logo, OG URL, that's the link to the page itself. And the reason you do the URL is because, especially with Joomla, there can be many different links that all point to the same page. This makes sure that all of your likes, all of your 
um, shares, everything always points to the same page. Um, that's really important. So when you add a like button to your site, if someone goes to sourcecoast.com or sourcecoast.com slash index.php or sourcecoast.com slash index.php, option equals com content, all those things to get to the home page, all of your likes are focused on that one, on the actual home page. And that's just good. So you don't have two likes on this page, two likes on that page, three likes on that page. Your home page really gets all of the likes that it's supposed to get. There are a lot of tools for Joomla that can set these tags. One of the, I highly recommend you find a tool that tries to set it for all of your pages. Um, JFP Connect obviously does it. SH404 is a good one um, because it can set it for every URL on your site. The biggest issues you'll run into is when you use, and I'm not picking on any particular extension here, but like a Jom Social or even a J2 store, which I, we use on our site, those will set the open graph tags within their extension, but then you don't have open graph tags on other pages of your site. And then if you add another extension that meant, that adds them to all of your site, then you can have this duplication of open graph tags and it can get messy for Facebook to know which content you really want to put forth. Um, so really find, find an extension that you already use that covers your whole site. And again, that can be an SEF extension, that can be a social network specific extension, but those are ones that can usually automatically generate tags for every page. They'll use the title that you set in the menu, the title you use in the article, the description, and then they can, uh, like JFB Connect, will find the first image in your Joomla content and use that. So it's not some sidebar image that's unrelated. It will do what you need it to do. Beyond open graph tags, just for content, there's also ways that you, if you run a bookstore or a music site, you can actually say this page is a music page. And then there's additional open graph tags you can set like the musician, the genre, those types of things. And that just helps discoverability within Facebook. These tags, again, they can be a little confusing to set. Um, so I highly recommend having a tool so you can do it on each page and you're not messing with HTML directly. Um, but the most important thing is that you should be setting some sort of open graph tags on your site, whether you're manually controlling them or letting something automatically do it by looking at your content. It's the most simple thing you can do and it has the biggest impact because now instead of just a little title in, an op or in a Facebook post, you have a nice rich page. I think I have a demonstration on the next page of what one of those look like. Yep, I do. Um, so that, that leads into social sharing. Now this post over here is if you just type in that URL into Facebook, it comes up with this imagery, this name, the title, and the description down there. Those are all coming from the open graph tags that are set on the page. So again, we have full control of how Facebook presents our site. And that's one of the most important things we can do to draw in new users. Um, under my head over there basically says, let, let, let your users share your content for you. And it sounds nice. Um, the Facebook like button obviously is known around the world but it doesn't have the power it used to have. Unfortunately, Facebook has constantly shifted down what a like is really worth. Um, so it's really important to social sharing stuff to your page helps your, helps your content look better when it's in a newsfeed, but this is not going to make your site overnight. Um, a lot of people I've talked to, they want to add a like button and get really frustrated when they don't immediately have a lot of likes. This is super easy to do. Every site does it, but don't expect this to, to draw in a major audience on its own. This is one of those things that's a slow burn. You always need good content. You always need something for people to want to like and something to look good in a newsfeed for people to come back to your site. But adding a like button, adding a tweet button, adding a share button is basically a no brainer to your content because it's the best way. It's a very simple way to get users in. And there are a ton of extensions um, that will automatically add these share buttons to your site. Again, figure out um, what social networks you want to focus on and then you should add them. Um, one thing to really note, 
go easy on the, the like buttons and the share buttons. Don't add them to every single page on your site. It really should be on the unique content of your site. It shouldn't be on transactional type pages like you know your login page, your registration page, even a logout page. No one's ever going to like your logout page. No matter how much how much design effort you put into your logout page, it's just not going to cut it. So, um, but but again, social network or social sharing buttons really are a critical piece of every site, um, just because they are so easy to add. So that's really it for the must-haves: your open graph tags and your social sharing. Um, and they're must-haves because they're so simple to implement. Now we move on to the most haves. And this is really, each site will be different as far as whether you want these features on your site or not. Um, you should always consider having them, but not every site really needs everything that we're gonna go over right here. And this list is a little bit longer, but not hugely longer either. Um, so authentication, social authentication to us on all of the sites that we use it, increase registrations dramatically. Uh, people don't like filling out forms anymore and typing in a new password or you know going to their password manager and adding a new thing. When you can have a social network authentication, it can dramatically increase your registrations. In addition to increasing your registrations, it can also reduce spam heavily. We have a lot of users that use JFB Connect and they do not allow Joomla registrations anymore. They only allow social networking registrations. If you have a form, if you have a form like a, a, a discourse form where people can chat, um, it's great to have social authentication because Facebook has already weeded out so many spam users. A lot of spam accounts don't have Facebook accounts or Twitter accounts or LinkedIn or those types of things, those social networks. So. It's a great way to lower your overhead costs as far as moderation and monitoring and, and just taking care of you know, the day-to-day -day grind of running a website of just allowing for social authentication. Again, a user only has to remember their Facebook password. It's completely secure. And then there are some additional benefits on it to you, the site owner. Most social networks allow you to Almost all of them allow you to import the user's email address. So you get that right away. You already know it's verified. Again, that lets you skip that one stage of sending out the authentication email, which a user has to click on to then get into your site, which is never a lot of fun. Then there's also some basic profile information that can be imported. Every social network is different here and every network loves to change what they allow you to import every day of the week, it seems like. Um, literally almost every month, there's some little change. Um, usually, it's almost always first name, last name, email, but then um, sometimes you can get the city and the state or the zip code of the user. Never can get the, the street address, of course, because that's way too private. Um, but some social networks let you get the phone number of the user. Um, some will let you get their interests. Some will let you get a lot of this detailed information that you can use to target that user for a sale or just to get to understand where your users are coming from. It's rich information that you don't have to set up a long 12 page registration form to get from your users. Um, so again, authentication really depends on your site. There are some times when maybe you don't want social networking, but in general, I don't have a lot of good reasons for that. Uh, a lot of the social networks have really clamped down on being able to post back to someone's feed, which is good because that actually increases your registration rate. It used to be that you could, someone would register on your Facebook or on your site using Facebook and you'd immediately post back to their wall, hey, I just registered on this site. Every user hated that. And so Facebook removed that feature. After they removed that, registrations on sites actually went up quite a bit because people didn't feel like they were just gonna get used and abused for promotional activities. Um, so social authentication, I mean, unless there's a privacy issue or some reason that you might not want to hook into someone's feed or someone might not want any of their personal information in any way showing up on your site, it's really worth it. If you run an e-commerce site, it's pretty much a no brainer because again, if you can get a user's email address without authorizing their email first, if you can get a city and a state and pre-fill that out on the checkout form, all of these details is one less friction point on the way to a sale. And so that's, that right there is critical. 
As for drawbacks, um, there are some terms of service limitations. Each social network is different. I'm not going to say willy nilly violate the rules, but unless you run a large site, Facebook's not really going to come after you for anything you do with user data. They limit it so much now that there's very little that you can really burn yourself with. But you know, if you grow to a substantial side or you get a lot of size or a lot of traffic, those are things you need to be aware of. If you grab, if you do get a user's phone number, it might only be allowed to send a text message to verify it's really the user or something like that. You might not be ever allowed to really call the person. Um, so you know, there there are some things that you need to to worry about as you grow. But at the beginning, I think for anyone in this session, we're just talking about getting users to the site, so you don't really have to worry about that too much. Um, don't tell anyone I said that. Um, but so social network social network authentication, if you want people to register on your site, it's totally worth adding. The, oh, the other biggest drawback here is that you have to create applications on each of these sites um, where you get an API key and a secret key. That can be a brutal process um, just because there's a lot of questions and a lot of technical stuff. We have guides to do it, but there's still some of the most complex things to set up. And then on top of that, like Facebook now has an app review process where you have to go through and prove that you're not going to sell some of the email addresses that you get and those types of things. A lot of it's checking a box or just saying why you want users to register through Facebook, but it can be, it can be a hassle. Again, limiting yourself to three or four networks makes that hassle a lot more manageable. Um, social feeds. Yes, it actually moved. Um, I'm going to get rid of my webcam here in general. So social feeds, this is um, most networks have some method of JavaScript where you can pull in content from a site. Now, this can be anywhere from Facebook's page plugin, which will show any of the posts that go to your Facebook page or Twitter's profile feed, which again shows your profile feed to LinkedIn's ridiculously dinky company plugin, which just says follow and it shows however many people you have. It does not even say the company name. You have to hover over it. So it's a really, you know, look at what you want before you actually try and start implementing it. Pinterest, which we do not implement in JFB Connect, has a really nice pin board that you can actually um, set up on your site as well. These are, again, pretty easy to do. Um, the importance of the social feeds here, there's, there's two types of audiences. Well, there's many different types of audiences, but you may already have a social following and you're trying to set up a Facebook presence or you're trying to set up a new website. If you already have a good Facebook following, then this can bring users over to your Facebook site, but really this is great or this is, this is good if you have a good website and you're trying to let people know that you're building up your Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or whatever. Um, this is a way just to show, hey, we do have a social presence. We have really good content on there. Go look at it. So, you know, on your sidebar over there, it's a good way for people to start following you and migrate people from your website to a social network or at least make them aware that you have a social network presence. The next slide will be going the other way. If you already have a Facebook page, you can bring people to your site. Um, for social feeds, uh, it's, again, a good way to promote your site and looking through my bullet points here. The HTML is generally easy to implement. Almost all of these social networks have a configuration tool. You can go in there, grab the HTML, and drop it into your page or in a, in a Joomla module. Um, uh, of course, the Joomla extensions directory has a ton of these just for, you know, there's some that are just for the page, page plugin, some for the profile feed. There's a lot of different ways to add this to your site. The drawbacks to these is that these are all JavaScript JavaScript implementations. And so what you get is what you get. Um, Facebook has their own feed. If you want to change the header on there, you change it on your Facebook page, but you have no real control over how this looks. You don't have control over the colors or the style. It's good because it's obviously Facebook branding on there, but it may not integrate with your site at all. It might not be wide enough or it might not be skinny enough for your site. There's only so much control you have over these things. They are generally semi-responsive, but I say semi because there's, there's a lot of caveats to that. So really you have to implement these to see if they work on your site. But again, it's a really good way to let people know that you do have a social presence if they're already coming to your site. 
Um, social streams, this is this is specific to JFB Connect, but there are other extensions out there that do it. And this is sort of the, the, the yin and the yang to the feeds that were before. With a social stream, you can actually pull in your feed directly to your server and you can merge it into one stream that's shown up as you can see on the right over there. And so that actually pulls in a Facebook, a Twitter and a LinkedIn feed and it's completely customizable through HTML. Um, so that way you can really tailor it to your site. There's a lot of flexibility and customization there. There are other products that do social streams, um, but this takes a lot more effort. This is not something you're gonna implement on your own. You need a extension to do that for you. There are a lot of benefits though too, because since this is not a JavaScript implementation, it's not pulling the content from the social networks, this text is actually HTML on your page, which makes it much more discoverable from search engines. And so it looks like your page is constantly being updated. It looks like you have rich content on there and new keywords, new stuff like that, always coming to your page. So there's there are advantages if you can if you can embed the content directly onto your page. But then we go into the caveats, da caveats down here. This is completely limited by social network support. Not all social networks let you use an API to, to pull, um, not all social networks let you pull a feed through an API and then present it on your own. Twitter and Facebook absolutely do. LinkedIn does, but they have, they've added a whole new API to do it. And there's a whole new set of rules that you have to go through. And then the other APIs are really hit or miss, which is why with JFP Connect, we really just focus on those three. Um, again, even we are only selecting the networks that we wanna support because it becomes difficult to support too many more. Um, I've seen issues with accessibility when displaying a social media feed on your site. Is that on my site? Um, that's very possible. Um, accessibility is a is is always a a challenge to tackle, and it could be on my site as well. Uh, a lot of the JavaScript feeds and the things that I was showing on this page before, um, again, these are really out of your control, and Facebook doesn't really care on your site how the flow goes. I mean, and once you get in here, if you're trying to tab through content, you know, you can get locked in here and it'd be very hard to get out because if you have a feed of a hundred posts trying to tab through every link in there, I can definitely see some accessibility issues going through some of these feeds. Um, but I, I, I don't know if there's a great way to accommodate for that. Um, and that, that is a problem. Um, so again, this is bringing in content to your site, again, showing users that you have a presence. So then there's the other way, which is auto posting, or at least posting content from your site to the other networks. Um, there are a lot of tools out there. Um, Tech Joomla has made one for quite a while, which I, the name is passing me up right now. Um, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Tech Joomla makes a auto posting one. JFP Connect has some auto posting features into it. Uh, but basically, as you generate content on your site, this can automatically blast it out to multiple different social networks. Uh, it sounds great on paper, and it is a way to make sure that your Joomla content gets out to social networks really quickly, and then you don't have to go and update each individual one. However, when we've worked with clients in the past, one thing we always recommend is really don't use auto posting like this. If you wanna use a tool, um, Hootsuite or something like that buffer, that's fine because one of the most important things, if you're gonna share content, <laughs> if you're gonna share content, if you're gonna write an article, a nice blog post that takes you 10 minutes to two hours to five hours to write, to automatically post that, is a waste in my opinion. Really, you know, even with good open graph tags, you'll have a title, you'll have an image, you'll have a description that will be up there. But if you want it to be on your page, it's really important that you set it up. Put in a nice comment. I worked really hard on this and I think it's a great example of blank. Give users an intro and a reason why they should look at it, not just a picture, a title and a thing. 
and a description because there's you're basically just throwing it out there for nothing to happen. Um, you know, your your Facebook feed, you should put as much love into that or at least a little bit of love to share each one of your, your works because if you want people to come back to your site and actually leave the walled gardens of Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn, you need to make give them a good reason to do that. Um, social, the, the times I do recommend social auto posting, if you have multiple authors on your site, maybe they don't all have access to your Facebook page. If you have some sort of um, scheduling software or something that's just alerting people, you know, a new event and you just want to put out that event every time it's created, you don't really need an intro for it. The event should be self-explanatory. There are good reasons to have social auto posting, but the idea of a lot of people is, oh, great, I get to create my content and it'll automatically go out there. It's true, but it's not going to hit the marks that you really want it to go to. Um, with that said, the social posting part is critical. So, you know, if you write a good blog post, go take 30 seconds, type up an intro, paste in a link. If your open graph tags are set up right, you've shared it the right way, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, these are these are things that you can do. Um, but again, do it the right way for your site, for your content. Okay, and then now I'm gonna go through a couple different things that are very, your mileage may vary. This is, you may wanna do it, you may not wanna do it. There's certainly no, the previous things I think most sites should do, these are really tailored to your own use cases. Facebook Messenger. Um, you have this little blue bubble down in the bottom right. It can pop up after a couple of seconds and say, hey, how can we help you? Welcome to our site. It can have a very customizable message. These little chat widgets, I go to sites all the time and I never once use them. Never once wanted to talk to anyone. I always hit that X button quicker than you can imagine. And I'm sure some of you share that opinion with me. We set up this site on the toy page that, or we set up not Messenger, we set up another one called Talk io on the toy company page that i'm working on and i've been shocked at how many people actually do use messenger um, or at least the the text chat when you get a customer who says i can't find this link or you know do you ship to this zip code you know how long should it take can i put in this weird thing and you can respond like that not through an email it's night and day, the response you'll get. I've responded to emails with long, long answers and given everything they need to do, but it was two hours after they asked the question and sometimes I never hear back. When you say, oh, go to this page and you paste the link in there while they're already on your site, you, you get a gush of thankfulness, but then they also know that if they're gonna purchase your product or use your site, they know that someone is there for them if they ever run into an issue. And that is really critical between making your site just be another page on the internet versus being a personalized site where someone know they can actually trust you. Messenger is really, uh, Talk.io, which I men men mentioned, is really good because you can, you can, there's a lot of history that you can keep. The problem with Talk.io is that basically if you, if you miss a message, a lot of the time it's very hard to reach out to that person later because they don't have to put in an email first to message you. So with Talk.io, you want to make sure that you are always available and you can set away hours, those types of things. But if you say you're going to be there from not manning the ship from nine to five, whether you're on your phone or your computer, you better be willing to answer. Facebook Messenger has some really big benefits because if someone messages you and you can't respond for some reason, it's a messenger thing. It's just like chatting with a friend. You can respond to it an hour or two later. You might not get that same glowing satisfaction from the user that it took you two hours to respond, but you also got to respond and that's an important thing. There's a lot of other tools out there like Mobile Monkey, and I can't think of some of the other ones, but they actually can automate a lot of responses for you. And then even with, I know with Mobile Monkey, if you are building up to a product launch, as people message you, it will build up a list. And then when you actually launch your product, you can send a message to everyone who's ever messaged you over the last six months and say, hey, we launched. It comes in as a personal message to their Facebook Messenger. And it's a really good way to, you know, it's not an email campaign. It shows up on their phones. It shows up on their, uh, on their desktop computer. It shows up everywhere saying we launched. 
and it's a really good way to remind people um, of what you're doing. So it's it's just a really good way to engage with people, but you've got to put in the time to do it. If you're not going to respond to messages, leaving one hanging and never responding is so much worse than just not having messenger at all. So, you know, it's, it's a time investment, um, but it is one that can pay off having some sort of chat widget. Oh, hit the wrong thing. All right. Uh, page tabs. Uh, if you have a Facebook page, and especially if you have a Facebook page that has an audience for it, that's about the only time I'd really recommend this. And I think they've actually tweaked it to where you need to have a certain amount of people like your page before you can even add a page tab. But if you have a Facebook page, you can add what's called a Facebook page tab. And over here on the window, you can see where it's highlighted home about source coast Joomla extensions. In your Facebook page, you can actually load a URL from your website. And a lot of people say, why do I wanna do that? I just wanna bring them to the website. And that makes sense. Uh, but what this does, especially if you have a large Facebook presence already, this is a good way for people to understand what your site looks like before they have to actually go to it. But even more importantly, you can load any page from your website. And so you can use this for things like a coupon page. You can create a Joomla article that just says, get a coupon, fill out your email address and have a form on there. And then within Facebook, you can have a coupon form where someone types in their email address, hits submit, and it looks like it's a part of Facebook. You can use a template that's just for Facebook. You can make it look like it's built into Facebook. You have this coupon form or a promotion or a listing of your events, anything like that. If you're using JCal Pro or whatever event extension you're using, you can actually show your calendar of what's upcoming and it can all be pulled from your website, but shown within Facebook. So if you already have the audience there, it's a really good way of keeping them there, keeping them informed, promoting something, having them sign up for your newsletter, whatever works, it's a great way to let users see your site, interact with your site, and sometimes not even know that they're using your website itself. Um, page tabs are actually pretty darn easy to set up. You really just give Facebook a URL and then JFB Connect does have some features to let you change the template so you don't have to use your default template. You can use a special template. Um, but it's it's one of those features that isn't as well known um, and it's not for every site, but it can be a really, really good way of, of enhancing your Facebook page content. Um, I like the options. Sorry, I just read your message down there. All the AI questions and annoying things. Yes, going back to Facebook Messenger, there are a lot of a lot of different things that you can do there. Again, I would recommend it mainly if you're going to use personalized messages. If you're going to just set up a help desk, I would and one that's just going to automate answers for you. I would recommend you have just a really good support page at that point, not a you know choose your own adventure clicking around through messages. That's not as much fun. Um, oh, embed. Uh, this is this is one of the harder things to explain because it's very similar to some of the social feeds and stuff. Um, but basically, Facebook and Instagram both have a way where you can embed a very singular post into your content, and they don't do this through JavaScript. It's actually from a server side call, and it so your server will reach out to Facebook, grab the HTML and then shove it into your, and then you can put it on your page wherever you want it to be. Again, this has the advantages of its HTML on your site. It's not JavaScript, um, but it actually is much more tricky than you ever would imagine to just show one post. And I don't know why they make it so hard instead of just showing, you know, some JavaScript option to do it. Um, but, Again, if you have, if you're representing some page that has a post that had a huge amount of likes or something really important that you want shown on your site in the Facebook and Instagram branding to, sh to prove your audience, to prove your social, you know, skills, not skills, whatever it is, this is something you can do. Um, as far as I know, Facebook, I think Twitter has an OM bed API. Facebook, Instagram, um, but it's it's a way to pull down content. Again, this is if you really have some 
really instru- important striking content that you want to show and just accentuate a post or two, it's a great thing to do. Um, but if you're, tr- you don't want to do this for every single post you have, it would be very time consuming. And it's just, you know, you, you sort of want to create content around this one post, you know, here's our product launch. We got a thousand likes in the first day. Great. Put that right in the middle. Beyond that though, you know, you're not going to do this with every single post. On top of that, um, because you're actually making a call to Facebook and um, Instagram directly, there's an API approval process that you have to go through just to prove that you're not going to use it to scrape all of their posts, those types of things. So it, it is useful in the very specific cases that you need it, but you know, those are, I'm calling it out on things you can do. And that's, that's the gist of a lot of the social networking features that you can do. Again, I, I focused on, oh, let me get my, let me come back in. There I am. Um, it really is a lot of pushing content out, pulling content in and making it look its best. Um, all the social networks have generally standardized around a lot of the same feature set now. Um, even for authentication, they use a spec called OAuth2. Most of the social networks have settled on using open graph tags. They might have their own tags you can use for more robust features. But if you implement open graph, you can support a lot of the networks for sharing rich content. If you have an extension or some feature that supports OAuth2, you can integrate with a lot of authentication schemes. It's really how you want to share that content to those social networks and how you want that content pulled into yours and how you want your presence to be known that you really need to consider. And it is something that takes a lot of thinking about and mapping out and then figuring out the features that are available to you. Um, Instagram can be very limiting on its features. I'll just say like when you, they're actually removing authentication, they want you to log in through Facebook. Um, and then, you know, for pulling in, they have no way to pull in a feed. You can show one image through that O embed API, but that's the only real way to show, um, Instagram content on your site. Others are much more allowing like Facebook and Twitter. You can generally pull in content in a couple different ways to get it on your site. And so again, investigate what's most important to you, figure out what features are available and then start implementing those slowly to suit your site. That's the best I got right there. So we have I hit 45 minutes almost to the top. So, so I have 15, 15 minutes. minutes. I can gladly answer any questions. I know this was sort of high level, but hopefully it, it, it gave you the breadth you need to take the next steps to move in. So I have a couple of questions um, under the Q&A. So number one, how do page tabs work? in Facebook app, Android and iOS. And then the other question um, is social feeds decrease page load. So, so two different type of questions you can hit. Sir, um, so I'll ta- tackle the second one first. Um, for social feeds, it really depends on what you're doing. So that that is one advantage I did not touch on for things like, um, so for, for OM betting, since your server grabs this from Facebook or Instagram, it grabs the HTML and then yes, you can cache that HTML on your server. So it instantly loads on the user site when they load your page. There's no JavaScript excess and you know calling up 27 trackers to pull up this one content. The same thing goes for our social feed. Like I said, there are other products that do this. Since this is actually pulled into your site, this can get cached and what cache time out on is how long this would go. So, or how long this would actually be um, active on your, or active on your site being, before having to be loaded again. And so that load really only affects one user, whoever, whoever hit misses the cache that the server has to go grab the content and that one user's page load time might be extended by a half a second or so to generate this, but then it's then it's cached. And then for the next 30 minutes, 60 minutes, all the users use that cached value. And so it, it is much better on page performance to do 
um, any sort of embedding that you can do. Um, because with JavaScript, if you've seen, you know, the page will render and then something will pop up over here and something pops up over here. And it's, it's not always the best user experience. It gets the job done. Um, but, but the JavaScript implementations take their time. And when you have a lot of JavaScript stuff happening, it's just going to keep adding to that page load, which is critical to keep as low as you can. Um, for page tabs on iOS, I don't have a good answer for that. I did actually have someone, um, we were supporting someone the other day and I, I could not find the page tab when I was trying to load uh, the user's page through a mobile browser. And so that's an excellent question. I know it works through desktop, but I actually had a hard time seeing the page tab in mobile. And so I'm not sure if that's something that Facebook um, has removed or somehow hides or there's some some feature that I missed there, but but you actually hit on a question that we have on our to-do list to investigate a bit more. So I don't have a good answer on how page tabs work there. Um, but if, if that was your main question on iOS, hopefully I answered it. If you have other questions on page tabs, I gladly can talk to those as well. Okay, so I have another question. What, um are you allowed to do with the email addresses that are fetched from either Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and others? Like, can you send out an email with those email addresses that you get? Be, be careful. Um, yes, you generally can. Um, there, there's a lot of, there are stipulations and stuff um, for transactional emails. You registered an account, you're absolutely allowed to do that. So there, there's some basic things you're allowed to do. It's once you get into the marketing zone that obviously gets a little more hairy. Um, in general, if you, during the registration process or somewhere else, you should have a, you can market to me check it, checkbox, something along those lines. GDPR is not something I'm going to discuss at all because I'm not in Europe. I'm in Florida. So we don't deal with those restrictions. And I don't want to give any advice on that. In general, though, with any time you collect a user's email, if you're going to use it for marketing purposes, you should ask them if you can. Now, for most sites that I work with, especially, you know, when you have 10,000 users or less, even if they're all Facebook users, if you send out a blast to all 10,000 users, you're not even going to be a blip on Facebook's radar. And it's not, Facebook wouldn't even know unless they got a complaint and it went through the process. Um, with all marketing, you should have an unsubscribe button on there. And so, you know, you can, you can, you can go your own path. For a lot of sites that I've worked with though, we will use that email address and we will send follow-up marketing we try and make sure that it's very relevant. We try and make sure that, you know, especially if they added something to their cart and it's a abandoned cart email, that's a pretty relevant thing, especially if you're offering a coupon, those types of stuff. And if you have an unsubscribe link that you follow and adhere to, generally you're not gonna see many issues from it. I'm not, again, giving you any advice on this. And Facebook at the same time has the ability to rescind API credentials. So if you really go out of bounds, bad things can happen. Um, but we've used it for marketing quite a bit and it, it works well for that, but don't in general, don't ever annoy your users. So I have two, um, questions and it's just so everyone knows it's two thirty-five, So we have 10 more minutes. Um, Edith, uh, I'm going to ask you both at the same time, cause they're, they're somewhat in common. Edith is asking, um, what is the best new social network next to <laughs> Facebook and Twitter in your opinion? The other question from Anne is, have you found a good way to build your audience? Um, I'm seeing simil other similar businesses aren't even using Facebook. So I, I could see how those are can be tied together a little bit. So the it's, it. it's so hard to predict what's going to be the next audience. Um, I mean, you know, this is where for what you can do on your site is a big difference from what's the next major social network. I mean, TikTok obviously is a major social network depending on who you're trying to target, which is getting wider every day. You know, it's not it's not just the, the millennial audience by any means, um, but there's only so much you can do with TikTok on your site. I haven't even really looked at TikTok integration, but I don't think you can do much with that. However, if you're making a product, 
you absolutely should probably be making some TikTok videos or some some things to go out there and show your product off. So there, there's there's a lot of different there's a lot to unravel in that question as far as what's a really popular social network and what's a popular social network that you can actually integrate into your website and then popular social networks that you should just be a part of with maybe a link to your website, not deep integration, but still some way to promote yourselves. I don't have any good, good recommendations on that. Again, I'm the shoemaker. I don't go out there and research social networks every day. I don't know what the small ones are. They have to be big to come up on my radar because this is that's marketing is not what I do on a day to day basis. So I'm just not the right one to answer that. Um, so I have so, one thing to add, though, for sure. what you're saying, just uh, just a quick note. Um, I just uh, did a digital MBA uh, last year. And one of the things that was said is find out what the gap is for your specific market and what people are not doing in your market that people in your market may be interested in. So if your market blogging is like 10,000 blogs, then you're not even going to show up on the radar. If in your market, everyone's doing YouTube, then you're not going to show up on the radar. But if no one's doing TikTok, and that is something that may be of use based on your clientele, that's where you want to go. So you want to find out where your competitors are and figure it out where they're not. Um, mm -hmm. A friend of mine had a winery and he went into France with a winery, obviously, you know, he's not going to get into that market, right? These wineries have been around for 200 years, but guess what? He discovered that these 200 year old wineries didn't have any blogs because they didn't need it. Guess what? He created a blog, got like a million hits and guess what? He's now on the map. So you want to figure out where the gaps are. Um, and that's just from a marketing standpoint and then use whatever tools. So. Sure. And, that and, and and that's definitely relevant. I mean, even when I said TikTok used it millennials, but it's growing right now. Certainly, you know, if you're just trying to target millennials, you're going to be going into a crowded market. But the audience on TikTok is growing every day. And if you can see where it's going to go and you have a product over here where it's going to be, which it's going to be everywhere. I mean, you know, that that is definitely something to start creating that content for now and be a part of it. Um, so yes, I, I, this is, you know, slide two is do your research, pick the networks that are right for you. And only, you know, that, I mean, it's, it's tough there. I don't think there's going to be very many generic networks much anymore between like Facebook and Twitter. I mean, they're going to be sort of these specialized video network, video platforms or short form content. The general ones of, you know, I'm just going to post my status update every day and, you know, let people know how I'm doing. There's only enough room for a few of those out there, and I think those are taken. Um, but if you find one that's certainly not too niche that it won't ever grow, but one that's sort of more up your content for rich video or you know just audio only or something like that, I think there are a lot of opportunities there. But every site is different. Every 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 goal is different. Okay, are there any other questions? I wanna make sure I hit everybody. We have Q&A and chat and, um, and Alex, the note I mentioned about accessibility, it was not for your site, but in general, uh, on one of our sites, we're very um, cognizant of accessibility. And as soon as we put those feeds in, guess what? That's exactly what fails because we cannot control that Facebook is not using ARIA tags. They're not using labels sure. properly and you're stuck. So you have to keep that in mind if you're putting a feed on your site, um, you know, cause you can't control it. Yeah. And, 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 you know, Facebook has changed those plugins plenty of times over the years. And so, you know, it's something you, you don't have to look at every day, but you know, one day it'll look one way and the next day it'll look different. And sometimes it doesn't even just look different in the same area that it was in it all of a sudden, takes up twice as much page space because they decided that that looks better for them. But, you know, now on your site, it breaks the whole page. So, you know, when you're, when you're allowing another site to manipulate your content, you have to be aware of what can happen. It doesn't mean that it's not worth doing. I mean, you know, if you're on your website every day or even every five days, you'll catch it. Um, but yeah, you're, you're putting some of your content in other people's hands and you have to deal with the repercussions of that. Okay, any other questions from people? Alex, this was fantastic, thank you. I don't think I have my name or my email address or contact information, but if anyone does have any questions, you're welcome to go to sourcecoast.com, 
there's a contact us form. You're welcome to send an email there or contact form there, alex at sourcecoast.com. You can give me a call or email anytime. Um, but I love questions. We answer a lot of things for people. You don't have to be a customer or anything. Um, so yeah, just send it out to us. Thank you very much. Take care. Have everybody. a great day. Thank you.